Logic Pro for iPad 2 is here with cool new features like session players for drums, keys and bass, the Chroma Glow plugin, a stem splitter and a chords track. And in this video, we're going to break down all of these new features. Let's go. Now there's a lot to cover in this new update, so I've got deep dive videos linked down in the description and you can also find timestamps there for this video so you can jump around. If you already subscribe to Logic Pro for iPad, this update is available for you. Just go to the App Store and hit the Update button. And if you're not already subscribed, there is a free 30-day trial that you can check out all of the features and then you can choose to subscribe either yearly or monthly. More details on that are in the description. And some of these features like the stem split requires an Apple Silicon iPad with an M1 or better chip and some of the other features like Session Player and Chroma Glow say they recommend an M1 but will still work on some older iPads. Now let's dive in and take a first look at these new features. We've opened a new project here in Logic Pro. We're going to tap on the Tracks mode and we're going to choose one of the new Session Players. These include Drummer, Bass and Keyboard Players. Now Drummer has been available in previous versions but it's got a big facelift and that's the one that we're going to check out first. So we're going to tap drummer, tap on the icon and open a new drummer track. Some of this will look familiar if you've used drummer before, but there's some cool new options that have been added in here. Let's take a tour of everything here in the interface. In the top left, we can change from the standard to the automation to the chords track view modes. Yes, we have a chords track now and we're covering that later in this video. For now, let's tap on this first option to go back to our standard. View. To preview the drummer track and listen to what we've got, all we need to do is hit this preview button. And tap again to stop. To change the drummer, we tap on the drums icon here and check this out. We've got rock, songwriter, alternative, and R&B drummers to choose from. We can also change the type here to electronic drummer, percussionist, or switch it to a bass or keyboard player because all of these are now part of the session player. You'll also notice we have change patch here. Now with that selected, if we go to say funk rock, it'll actually change the kit. See how it's got the smash kit there? If we don't, if we have that change patch off, and we go to hard rock, it will keep the same kit but change the drummer. For this demo, let's go funky. Complexity and intensity are controlled using these sliders so we can make it more or less complex and more or less intense. Let's dial these in around about the middle and take a listen. That sounds cool. Like previous versions of drummer, we can change between a hi-hat, a cymbal, or a tom drum as our main element in our drum beat. But what's new is patterns. We can tap on this section here and choose from one of four different patterns. Let's change it up to pattern number four and then hit our preview button. Sounds cool. We also have a pattern selector for the kick and snare, which we can tap here and choose from one of these eight patterns. You can also follow the chords track, which we'll show you later, or another track if you have another track in your project. You can turn off the kick and the snare by tapping on the kick and snare drums here. Fill amount tells the drummer how often they should go off the beat and add a fill. With it 100%, you get a fill every bar or so. And the complexity knob tells the drummer how fancy those fills should be. Finally, we have the swing dial here. So we can dial in some swing and change between 16th and 8th notes by tapping on the button below. Let's take a listen to some swinging drums. A new feature that I really like is the Perform Again button. By tapping on this one, you can see that it changes up what we're hearing here and we get something a little different. And this is handy if you've dialed in all your settings, they look about right, but it's just not playing exactly what you want. Hit Perform Again and try something new. But wait, there's more. We also have a Details tab where we can control even more, such as Ghost Notes. Yes, we can control how many Ghost Notes. They're those little extra taps that you get between your beats. And if we turn that all the way up, you can get some pretty funky grooves. 
You can also control the feel, making it either more of a pull or a push, which means it puts the drums just behind or just in front of the track. Check out the full deep dive video to see that in action. As well as dynamics, which tells the drummer how much to vary the volume or the hardness of the hits. You can either have a really dynamic or a really level performance. In the bottom row, we have snare. We can either leave this automatic or tell the drummer exactly where you want them to hit it. If we want, say, a side stick all the time, we can select it and take a listen. Percussion is still here, but it's been moved to the details tab. We can tap this one and add our tambourines, shakers, and claps. We can also control our cymbals. We've got the hi-hat button here where we can choose automatic, half closed, half open, or make it wide open to give yourself a very different sound. And we have tempo. This is cool because we used to only have half speed or double speed with a couple of patterns. Now you can choose or create any pattern you like and make it half or double time. Let's punk it up. And finally, a dial I know I'll be reaching for a lot, and that is humanize. So if you don't want your performance to be right on the grid, you can actually dial this up and it makes the drummer play a little more loosey-goosey. If you make it 100%, maybe they're a little bit too loose. The last tab we have here is manual, and yes, you can dial in your own patterns. So you can dial in your kick and snare patterns to make them as wacky and zany as you like, and then your drummer they got to play it. You can create longer patterns by tapping in the top left here and choosing two, three, or four bars. And in the top right here, you've got copy, paste, and you can hit the reset button to go back and start from scratch. If programming in your own drummer is not your thing, don't worry, you've got a heap of presets here to use. So if we tap on the preset button, you can choose any one of these. Let's change this one up to the mic check preset. And you can see that all of these settings have been dialed in, including a lot of our details setting to match the preset. Some final handy options. In the top right here, we have the lock settings. Yes, finally, we can lock the fills, the swing, and the settings down so that we can make some other changes and those won't actually change. So it's a handy feature that's now been added. And in the very top right here, if we tap on the three dots, you can load the default patch. So that's handy if you've changed up the drums that the drummer's using. You can go back to the default patch and you can even recall the default for everything meaning it'll go right back to the default so that's drummer but i know you want to see these new session players so let's add a new track by tapping on the plus button go to our session player but this time let's add a bass player by selecting bass and tapping and there we go it's going to add a brand new track with a bass player and the good news as you can see is that the interface is very similar across all of our session players there are a few different things you can change and tweak which we'll cover now like drummer we can preview by tapping the preview button here We can change our bass player by tapping on the icon there and selecting from any of these bass players including yes an upright bass and similar to drums, if we have change patch unselected, it will leave the retro upright on there, even though we're changing to another bass player. If we leave that on, it'll actually change it back based on our selection of bass player. And yes, you saw right, we even have a slap bass. <laughs> For this demo, I'm going with the modern R&B bass. Complexity and intensity sliders make a return and they're consistent across all of our session players. As are the fill amount, fill complexity, and the swing options. They all work the same on all of our different players. But in the middle here, we have some variations. We once again have our rhythm option here. This time we can tap that, and this is the rhythm that's going to be played by the bass player. So we can change this up from say number four to number six, and we get a different kind of vibe. We can also follow the chords track, which I will show you in just a little while, as well as any other track. So we can follow our drums, which is a very handy feature when you're using bass and drums together. In the middle here, we have more options. The melody lets us tell the bass player whether they should hang out on the root note and play mostly the root note, or whether they should use some more notes and create their own melody. Let's go with most notes and take a listen. Thank you. 
and you can hear they move more around the bass with more notes. Next, we have octaves, same sort of deal. We can either not go up the octave or we can do it sometimes or more of the time. Let's do it more and see what we get. The phrasing lets us control how long the notes are. If we tap this one, we can go really short. And you can hear the bass player cuts off the notes quite quickly, or we can go with a long phrasing. And you can hear they let those notes ring out when they're not doing all the fancy stuff. This is a cool feature. We can tell the bass player the lowest note we want them to play. It'll be E1 by default, but say you're playing in drop D, you can drop that down by sliding it down. Or if you want to emulate a five string bass, you can go all the way down to B. And once again, you have the perform again button if you want to let the bass player have another go. And yes, we have the details tab again here. This time we can control things like our dead notes. So if we have that all the way down, you get a sound like this. So every note is allowed to ring out. If we turn the dead notes way up, take a listen. So you get more of those little touches in between the notes. Next is slides. We can tell how often we want the bass player to slide between notes. Let's turn this all the way up and take a listen. Pretty cool. Pickup hits tells the bass player whether they should play clean or not worry so much about hitting the pickups. And double stops are those cool little two note stops that we hear there. If we turn this all the way up, you'll see here it's gonna add a whole bunch more double stops. Dynamic mute can be turned off or on, and we have a mute offset here to control it. And we can also tell the bass player whether they should align with the root or go a bit more loosey-goosey. And we have a laid back knob here, which I kind of love. And our feel, dynamics, humanize, and tempo return exactly the same as with drummer, as does the ability to program in our own manual patterns with all the same features. And once again, in the top right, we have our lock settings and we have the ability to go back to scratch, which I'm gonna to do to take us back to the default. Let's listen to what we've got here so far. Pretty funky. Rarely will you only want one region for your session player. So if we tap outside here, we can actually tap, tap again, and tap on create session player region. This is gonna create another region that we can control completely separately from our first. And let's do the same with our drummer track. We'll tap, tap again, and create a session player region up there as well. Our third session player is the keyboard player. We're going to tap the plus button here, go to session player, make sure the keyboard player is selected, hit the button, and there you go, we've got a keyboard player ready to program. Once again, we can preview our piano. We can use the presets to change it to something different. Let's go with the fluid chords. And we can change the player type by tapping on the piano here. This time we've got freely broken chords, block chords, arpeggiated, and a simple pad. Once again, if we want to change the player without changing the patch, that's the instrument we're using here, we can deselect. So if we go to the simple pad, it will go to the pad player, but it's keeping our piano there. However, with change patch on, if we go to the simple pad, it's actually gonna change it up to the classic analog pad and sound like this. Now with all of our session players, you may want to change the instrument patch that's being used. And you can do that across drummer, bass, and keyboards. To do that, we tap in the bottom left here on our browser and go to instrument patches. Now, all we need to do to change this studio grand is select another keyboard, tap, hold, and drag, and drop it on our studio grand. And like magic, it's going to change. And now our session player will play this new instrument. And to make it even easier, if you have the replace patch on by tapping in the bottom left here, all you need to do is tap and it's going to instantly change 
your keys. The other thing to keep in mind is that our bass and our keyboards actually use a plug-in to control the sound. So this is all of your player options. If you want to change up the sound with more detail, if we tap on the plugins button down below here, you can see this has the studio piano. If we double tap that, we can change the settings and actually change the piano sound that we're hearing. And for our bass, it's the studio bass, which we can also use to adjust the sound, either with the basics or even more details. And stay tuned here to Studio Live today because we'll be covering those plugins in detail in a future video. Let's get back to the keyboard instrument, but if we can't see the options here, all you need to do is tap down the bottom here on the editor window and it will return. Now we've already covered complexity, intensity, fills and swing. So let's concentrate on this middle section. Our pattern option returns. We can can tap on the patterns and change to a different pattern. We can also follow the chords track or not, or follow another track. What are these little hand icons all about? Well, we can actually tell the keyboard player to play with one hand, two hands, or no hands. So if we make it just the left hand, we just get the bass. Or just the right hand if we just want the treble side. We can also tell the keyboard player at what part of the keyboard they should play. We can send the left hand right down low to the bass end. Take our right hand right up to the top. Or move both somewhere into the middle. We also have more controls for our left and right hand. With our left hand, our voicing can be root only, root and octave, root and fifth, or root, fifth and octave. We also can choose whether we want sustain only, a simple, moderate, complex to follow the right hand, or some steady eights. And I'll leave you to experiment with those. In the right hand, we have a full chord, or we've got a bunch of other options here as well. And we can go with minimal right up to a large range. Remember, I've got a complete deep dive video on the key keyboard session player, that's down in the description. Once again, we have a details tab. Not as many details here, but some cool things all the same. Grace notes are those little notes that lead into other notes, little trills and things. So if we turn the grace notes all the way up, let's take a listen. And apart from that, we have our standard feel, dynamics, humanize, and tempo options, which you already know. Now, session players are great, but wouldn't it be cool if you could actually set chord progressions and get your session players to follow them? Well, that's exactly what we can do with the brand new chords track here in Logic Pro for iPad. To view our global track, we tap on the button at the top here, and you can see it's already pre-prepared the chord track for us. However, if that's not chord, you can tap on it and select a different track. You can also hit the three dots in the top right here and go to customize global tracks. You can show a single track or you can choose multiple tracks to show in your global view. Because we're looking at chords, we're just going to select chords and look at the chords track. To add a new chord, not surprisingly, we press this big chord button and we're given this dialogue. We can choose the chord by just typing it straight in here or we can tap here on the root note and select the chord that we would like to have. You have all all the options. You can choose some suspended, augmented, diminished, fifth, seventh, ninth. All of the chord options are in here. You can even change the bass note of the chord to a different note to create some really interesting chords. You can also change the scale if you'd like, and you can even use your MIDI keyboard to play in your chords. If you're like, what is this chord? I don't know. Well, now you can find out. And the reason we're rushing through this is there's a complete deep dive video on chords down in the description. To add a second chord, all we need to do is go to the place we'd like to add it and hit the plus button again and there is our second chord in our progression. Now we probably don't want one chord going for eight bars so no problem we can tap and use the handles to the side here to drag the chords around to exactly where you'd like them to be and you can use the same process again to add in a new chord in the next slot. Now this first chord's a little bit weird, so we're going to edit it. To do that, we tap, tap again, and tap edit chord. And now we can change this up. Let's just make this a standard E chord by removing the seventh and making the bass note back to an E. Once you've set your chord progression, you can hear what your session players do with it.
What if you want to try out some other chord progressions or maybe you're not that familiar with chords? No problems, we have the chord progressions option. If we tap on this E chord, let's first of all just slide it all the way over here so it's taking up all eight bars. Now when we tap on this one, we can go and hover over chord progressions and look at this. We got some standard and popular chord progressions. Let's use this. This is the 1564 that you would have heard a lot. We'll tap on that one and check this out. It changes to the C, G, A minor, F, C, G, A. A minor F. Let's take a listen. Heard that one before? When you have a chord progression, it groups that together as one block. To ungroup those, if you want to edit it, tap and tap ungroup chords. And we can also copy and paste different chords or blocks of chords by tapping and tapping on copy. If we bring our playhead down here, we can tap, tap again, and paste at playhead. And there you go. We've now got a complete chord progression across two regions for our session players. Remember earlier on when we were talking about session players, I mentioned that they have their own chords track. Well, let's dive into that now. Yes, you've basically got two options when you're using session players. They can follow the global chords or you can set your own chords at the session player level. To add region chords, we first of all need to change from the move mode to the add mode. So tap on the add button there. We can now tap in this section and you'll get this warning. It says when you add chords to a session player region, the region follows the region chords instead of the chord track. You can set the region to follow the chord track again at any time. So don't stress if you mess things up, you can revert it, which we're going to show you. We're going to hit continue and there you go. It started adding in some new chords here in our region. And this works very similar to our global chords view. Let's tap on this move button here to go back. And what we can do now is use the handles at the side here to change up the chords. So if we wanted the first chord there, we can add a second one there. To add a chord, we go back to add mode and we can tap and you can see there it's going to add as many chords as times we tap. We can then go back to our move mode and move these dividers to line them up on our bar markers. To edit any of these chords, we tap, tap again, and go edit chord. And we use the same interface as we did with our global. We can also tap up the top here and use chord progressions, just like we did with our global chords. And that's going to change up to a progression. And if we tap up here again, you've got other options like being able to double or halve the chord rhythm, but the one that's interesting is we can go back to following the global chord track. So if we select this one, it's going to remove those chords and go back to following the global chords. Let's tap again and go back to following our region chords and they pop back in. The other cool thing we can do here is actually paste the global chords into our regions so that we can then edit them and just tweak them a little bit. To do that, we tap here and instead of using the follow, we come up here and we paste chords from the global track. If we hit that, you can see here these now match our global chords. And why this is cool is that now let's just say in this bass track, we wanted this G chord to actually keep the C root note. Well, we can tap it, tap again, go edit chord, and we can actually change the bass note note here from G back to C. So it's actually going to play a G slash C chord here. Let's listen to how that sounds. So this is handy if you want to use your keys or your bass to just have some slight variations from your global track. You can paste them and then it's going to work that way. The other thing you can do is let's say we wanted all of the instruments to follow this G slash C. Well, no worries. We can do the opposite. We can tap down here and we can paste the chords to the global track. If we hit this one, check that out. It pastes it from our region back up to our global chords. So you can go either way when you're dealing with chords. And one final little thing about chords, if we go down to the bottom here and instead of being in instrument patches, we go into say our loops, you'll notice that your loops will now have a little letter or sometimes a chord progression after them. There's also session player loops you can check out. If you tap in the top right here, up the top, you can go session player loops. And these are just like the old drummer loops that we used to use with drummer, but now they're across all of our different session musicians. So you can explore those if you're looking for some other options. So so that's a quick overview of chords here in Logic Pro for iPad, but don't forget there's another deep dive video all about chords down in the description.
It's now time to talk about the new Chroma Glow plugin here in Logic Pro for iPad. Chroma Glow is a one dial plugin used to sweeten your mixes by emulating some cool retro and vintage outboard gear. And as mentioned at the start of the video, Apple recommends you use an iPad with M1 or better as the processor because this uses quite a bit of processing power. You can use it with older iPads, but your mileage may vary. I'll be checking it out on my old iPad Pro here on the channel, so stay tuned for that. Now you can use Chroma Glow on literally any track you like and it's going to kind of do some cool things and sound good. I'm going to use it on this drum sum track that I have for my song called Choices. If we solo this at the moment, the drums sound like this. To add the Chroma Glow plugin, we're going to come down here to the plugins button and we're going to tap on this one, Audio FX. Now I've recently used it, so it's under my recent. If you don't see it there, go into distortion and then chroma glow. And you can use it in its small view here by just driving up the knob there. But if you want to get all of the options, double tap and it will open in your view. I'll go through all of the different options in just a moment, but for now, let's just turn up this drive knob and hear what chroma glow does. So you can hear it's adding some saturation, some of that analog warmth that you get from outboard gear, which for your digital recordings can be a very handy thing. Once again, we have a complete deep dive video on Chroma Glow down in the description, but for now, let's take a quick overview of the settings we have. My big recommendation is to start with presets. This can help you learn how a plugin like this works. Let's tap where it says default preset, and it will open a heap of different presets for all of our different instrument types. Because we're using drums, we're going to tap on drums and let's try the crusher on these drums. Sounds pretty cool. To change it up, we can just select another preset by tapping, say, this one, the drum bus, which is just going to add a little drive to these drums. And what you'll notice is every time you select a new preset, it changes the settings here. Let's run you through the different settings and options you have available. In the top left, we can choose the type of processing here, retro tube, modern tube, magnetic squeeze, or analog preamp. And as you change these, it will change some of the other settings that we have available. Next, we can choose the style, either clean or colorful. Clean will just kind of turn it up, whereas colorful will add its own colorization to the sound as well. In the top right here, we have a bypass, so you can bypass at a certain frequency so everything below that frequency won't go through the plugin we also have our level in if you need to turn up the input and a level out as well as a mix knob so if you don't want a hundred percent of the effect you can actually mix in a lower amount and at the bottom we have both a low cut and a high cut filter so we can turn these on and off and then you can decide the shape also the frequency at which those low cuts or high cut filters happen the resonance and whether they happen pre or post the the effect so it'll filter before or after this drive is added and like most plugins less is more so if we drive it up too hard you can get some really gnarly distortion Chroma Glow also works great on your master bus, so you can go to your stereo out and add it to your plugins here in the mixer. And if you want to see that in action, check out the complete video down in the description. Stem Splitter is the last major feature we have to talk about here in Logic Pro for iPad 2. This takes a stereo WAV file and separates it out into vocals, drums, bass, and other instruments. But you don't want to just hear that, you want to see it in action. So let's go back to step one and show you how it works. First, we need to bring in an audio file. The way I like to bring a file in is to tap on the three dots at the top here, go into split view, and then go into the files app here. Here's a folder of files I prepared earlier of my songs. I'm going to grab this one called Hold On. I'm going to tap and hold and drag it over into a blank track in our project. Now, in this case, it's a different sample rate because this was made in GarageBand originally. We're gonna tap on convert file there. And sometimes it'll ask you some additional questions like these that they contain some markers and other information. You can just try and import them. And then there you go. Your file is here in Logic Pro. Tap the three dots at the top again and go back to full screen. 
To split this WAV file into its four stems, we simply tap, tap again, and tap on Stem Splitter. We can choose to split out the vocals, drums, bass, or other. I say just do all of them because you can always mute and solo each one afterwards. So we hit the split button and Logic Pro does its magic. And there we go. It pops up just like that with our four different stems. Should we take a listen to see how it went? Here's the song with all of the original tracks intact. If it's long and you have much time, you're in a rush and you don't know why. Let's play again now and solo each individual track to see how it did. You want it all now but you doubt your talent and you don't know how look around at what others do but success have to fight over now wanna be a long time all in all, pretty cool. It separated out those vocals really well. The drums are great. The bass has a little bit of artifacting in there, which you'll often get with these sort of separation tools. And the other instruments are there as well. And when you've got tracked with backing vocals, they'll go in your other instruments too. So it's really cool because if you wanted to just solo your instruments, you can get an instant karaoke track. And for folks like me that sometimes mix your vocals a bit loud, you can now control the volume of your vocals in your mixes, even if you don't have the original stems. When you're gonna have to fight, hold on, hold on. And of course, you can use things like plugins, you can mix, you can do everything else you can do in Logic Pro for iPad because these are just WAV files now and it puts it under this nice sum stack for convenience. Before we finish up a couple of final things, we have new lessons. So if you go into a new track here and you tap the See All button, you'll notice that we have some new lessons for things like the session players and working with chords. To view one of those lessons, simply tap on it here and hit Start Lesson, it will jump you in to Logic Pro for iPad after downloading the project and it will guide you through so you can learn all about these new features. Or just stay tuned to Studio Live today because I'll be going through these in detail in future videos here as well. The other cool little Easter egg we have in here is the complete project of a very cool artist called Ellie Dixon. To get to that one here under Featured Sound Packs, we tap on See All. And in the top left, tap on this one, Swing by Ellie Dixon. Tap on the Open button and hit Reveal and it will download and add this new project. To check it out, just tap it. And here you go, you've got a complete Logic Pro for iPad project from an amazing artist that you can experiment with, you can throw plugins on, you can remix, you can use to learn Logic Pro for iPad too. Phew, that's a lot of cool new features to cover in one video, but never fear, there's a heap more videos down in the description where you can learn all about these in more detail. Also check out the live streams that I do here on Studio Live today. I'll definitely be covering Logic Pro for iPad 2 and these cool new features. If you've got additional questions or comments, you can drop those down in the comments below and I'll see you next time.